Hello, it's uh, late December, and this is Anza Borrego Explained. I'm Mark Jorgensen. Today we're going to talk about mesquite, the honey mesquite. We're in Borrego Valley, where the mesquite population is experiencing a uh, die-off, has been for about the last 15 or 20 years. It's about uh, estimated around 50% of the mesquite in Borrego Valley have died or are in the process of dying, much like this one right behind me here. These are very long-lived plants. It's thought they likely live a couple of centuries, and they're largely responsible for the formation of these dunes that I'm sitting on. When a mesquite gets uh, started and puts its roots down, it develops a, uh, a large thicket and it begins to obstruct the wind which is carrying sands across Borrego Valley out of Coyote Canyon and Borrego Palm Canyon and the wind hits the mesquite thicket and drops its load of uh, windblown sand creating dunes so over the centuries some of these dunes have gotten to be 20-30 feet tall. Now with uh, the advent of heavy groundwater pumping by agriculture here in Borrego Valley, the underground water supply or the aquifer is declining about two feet per year and over the last 40 or 50 years you can imagine that that means the water table has declined uh, over a hundred feet. Now although the fact that uh, these mesquites have some of the deepest roots of any plant in the world have been measured down to about 150 feet deep uh, down in mines. People have found their roots coming through the rooftops of, of mine shafts. Uh, despite the fact they have some deep roots, they still can't keep up with the declining aquifer. And so what we're finding here in Borrego Valley and what we're in right now is called the Borrego Sink. Um, one of the lowest parts of Borrego Valley is a uh, high percentage of these mesquites now are dead and when they die uh, it tends to deflate the sand dunes that have been contained around them so as you'll see uh, on this one here the entire plant is kind of standing up on its on its tiptoes it's about six feet off the ground behind me and uh, this dead mesquite might sit here for 20 or 30 years until the wood deteriorates. It's a very dense uh, hard wood and so it, it doesn't just uh, disappear in a year or two after it dies. And we'll scan around here you'll see there are some alive. This is uh, early winter so mesquite are deciduous. They lose a lot of their leaves. But uh, we'll come back in the springtime when everything greens up and you'll see that uh, about 50% of these plants are no longer living. So this is a, this is a direct uh, example of the impacts that groundwater pumping is having here in Borrego Valley. Not just on the mesquite but on uh, you know, human habitation, on, on the future of of uh, viability of Borrego as a community and uh, the community is working right now with the state and the county to develop a sustainable groundwater management plan that will be implemented over the next 10 to 20 years to try to uh, get uh, our water consumption under control which is going to mean uh, controlling some of the agricultural pumping and and the uses of water for golf courses. Golf courses are going to have to uh, find a way to conserve, reduce uh, turf. Uh, the people who live here in Borrego have already cut back almost 50 percent of their uh, domestic water use over the last decade or so and uh, so the future will be that farms will have to be greatly reduced and we can come into a water balance where we're not taking out uh, four times what actually comes in here by nature on an annual basis. 
So the mesquite is uh, one of two varieties we have here in Anza Borrego. This is called the honey mesquite. The other one is the screw bean mesquite. And uh, it's a real interesting plant. Has a whole micro ecosystem built around it. And um, it would be wonderful if we could find a way to maintain this uh, interesting plant community here in Borrego Valley. So that's Anza Borrego Explained.